everybody. This is Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hineni. And um, I started recording this earlier and then thought that it was recording vertically instead, so I stopped it. So I only had done one thing, and so I can show you that. So after I got off the camera yesterday, I took each of these sheets and I creased them really, really well. Okay, and then I put them into the order that I wanted because I don't want to have like a bunch of small sheets together. I want to have um, at least a large sheet in between each one. And um, the main thing that I already did that I'll show you, where is it, is I added a paper bag because, you know, same color, it's perfect. So, I'm going to set this aside. So what I did was I had this lunch bag, okay, and my journal is four and a half inches wide. This is almost 11 inches, so it's too long, but I don't want to cut it at all. I like having this top. I obviously don't want to cut the bottom. So what I did was I made this into kind of a flip, actually this way. Okay, and so what I did was I measured four and a half inches, a little bit under four and a half inches for the top part. This will be in the journal and it will be able to be used as a, like kind of an envelope kind of thing. And then I took the rest of this and I didn't want to fold it over this way. So I folded it, here's the natural crease. I folded it this way here. Okay, so then what this can be is it can be an envelope right here. I mean, not an envelope, a pocket right here. And I can cut this open to make this into a pocket. And then I've also got a pocket on this side, a very shallow pocket on this side of the page. Um, and I could cut this part right here open to make that, you know, a bigger pocket right there. Actually, I might do that. So anyway, I won't do any of that until I get to that point in decorating um, the journal pages and everything. So, um, so what I did was then I went through and made sure that I have these in the order that I want them to be. The pages are all like slightly different sizes, but overall it's eight inches this way, four and a half inches this way, which means that most of the pages are about nine inches wide or less. Okay, so that one's nine inches. Okay, or they could be a little bit less. Um, so this one here seems like it's bigger for some reason. Oh, I think it's because um, of where it's folded. I'm not sure what I'll do. I may cut this one slightly or make it into a folded one. I'm not sure. So we'll decide when we get there. But anyway, so that's what I've got. I love the way that this crinkles and it feels really, really nice. I'm not ironing any of the pages. I like the wrinkles and um, I'll probably choose like the most wrinkled page to kind of highlight those with ink. In fact, this is a really nice nicely wrinkled page. So I might just go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so what I want to do today is I want to, I want I removed a few sheets too because it was too thick. Because when we add all of our flips and, you know, tucks and cards and everything, it's going to be really thick and I don't want it to be so thick that you can't write in it. Okay, so um, what I want to do today is I want to start decorating some of these pages. Okay, and um, yeah, I want to start decorating some of these pages, the pages themselves. Now, part of the reason why I decided I wanted to do something with packing materials is because it took me a whole year to realize this, but you know, you, we use all these really pretty papers for our pages and then we cover them. And I hate covering the pretty pages, you know, it's, it's kind of hard for me to do because I really don't like covering them. So I thought, and then, and then like the journals that I have, the junk journals I have, that I write in, that I use for myself, um, I don't like, you know, I don't mind writing on the pretty pages, but I don't like to cover them up with, you know, something like pictures or whatever. And so, you know, it's like some of those pages end up being really hard for me to use. So I thought, well, let's try this. Let's see what would happen if we had fairly plain pages. I am stenciling on them and I'll do some stamping and stuff on some of them. Oh, I was going to, highlight the wrinkles, wasn't I? Oh, well, I'll do that on a different page. Um, but yeah, so these are going to be, well, that didn't, for some reason that didn't um, stencil very well. Um, so these are going to be fairly plain pages, even though I'm stenciling on them 
and stamping on them. I'm stamping with brown and maybe I might use some gold too. Maybe I need to put more ink in this pad. Um, so they're still going to be, you know, pretty much plain. Well, that's a little bit better. Okay. Let me put some more ink in this pad. I think that might be what it needs. Um, and so, you know, so I don't think that anybody would hesitate to write on it and I won't feel bad about covering up a really pretty design or something with, you know, all my fun goodies that I like to put on it. Now, does that mean that I'm never going to use pretty papers in my journals again? No. <laughs> we all love that. And most of my journals will probably be made with pretty papers. But this is just kind of an experiment to see how this goes and how it looks and everything. And I will have pretty papers in this. They're just going to be, you know, the things that are on top of the brown background. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um... So, all right, let's see if this, this is, even though this is on the same paper, it's going to be on a whole different part of the journal. So it doesn't matter that this is going to be a whole lot um, darker. And I'm being kind of careful not to get this on my mat because I don't want all that ink to end up on the back of the page. Ooh, that's kind of cool, huh? Okay, so that just makes a nice little, oh, that went through. So that'll, that'll be a design that kind of comes through. Okay, so that's one thing to remember about this packing paper is it's kind of thin, um, but the, I was using a lot of ink right there too. So, and that's okay. I mean, that's gonna be pretty. And I might put something over here or something. Um, that'll be nice. I wonder if any of this ink leaks through onto the table. Yep, it sure did. Okay, so where are my wipes? I need to wipe this off so it doesn't get onto the back of a page someplace. Okay, and if I don't forget, because <laughs> my memory isn't too much good these days, I am going to have one page that I'm going to decorate with Christmas stamps. Um, because, you know, it'd be fun to have a page that's for, you know, like Christmas memories or something. Uh, you know, favorite Christmas or something like that. Um, okay, so there we go. So let this dry a little bit here before I put anything down on it. Okay, so now let's try another stencil and see how this works. Um, one of my favorite stencils is this number one. <laughs> I just think it's really cool. So let's do this. And I'm not going to stencil all the pages. Oh, I wanted a page that's really wrinkled. Let's do that first while I'm thinking of it. Sorry, you guys. I am, what a mess I am today, huh? I'm just like completely, I'm actually somewhat organized ahead of time more than I normally am, but it's not helping me seem organized, is it? Okay, so I think this will be a good page to highlight the wrinkles. And it's really easy. All that you do, hopefully this isn't too dark, um, is just very lightly sweep across the wrinkles with your inked blender thingy. And see how that just kind of makes the wrinkles stand out? It's very pretty. I think that's just really nice. So I'm just barely touching it. I'm not like, you know, putting any pressure really. Just barely touching it and just letting it bring out the natural beauty of the wrinkles they're very cool. Okay, I want to get a little bit more ink. I'm not even pushing down on that hard because I <clears throat> just inked that up and it's really, I think I put too much ink on it. Well, no, maybe I need to press down. I guess it's soaked into the pad by now. I think I had gotten it before it soaked in before. So anyway, I love the feel of this paper. It's really nice and it'll be very very nice to write on okay so see how that just makes all those nice wrinkles just stand out really well okay and out of curiosity I want to see if it leaked through no it didn't okay so it's just because I used too much ink at that one point on that other one okay so that's pretty cool that is very cool okay so we'll put that back in here and, I, and like I said, I'm not going to stencil all the pages. I will probably leave most of them just plain because we're going to be putting stuff on top of them. But I wanted to 
do some of them. Okay, um, and I may run the bag through the printer. I'm not sure how wise that is now that I've already folded it. Yeah, so uh, I think if I had thought ahead of that, I might have run it through the printer and printed a design on it, but maybe not. Um, let's see, how about this one here we're gonna use for this number stencil. And when I do these stencils, I don't try to get it all even. Uh, I will, I'll use this, like I'll really ink up my, my blender thingy and I'll get some of it, you know, so that it's pretty dark, but then as the ink gets used, it'll get lighter and lighter and that's kind of good. It looks really cool if it's not all even. I do that with pretty much all of my stenciling and junk journals. See that, how it's like kind of uneven? This one's actually darker than I normally do, but that's because I just got ink. And it's fine because it's like kind of, it's the same color as the paper. It's just a different hue or depth or whatever. Um, sorry, I am kind of distracted. Today is my chore day. It's my day off from teaching. And so this is the day that I try to get as many chores done as possible. And I let myself just like really spend time texting with friends and stuff. And I try to catch up on email and everything. Um, and and also today is really special because, um, you know, if, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, then you probably don't know that my husband was killed in a car accident almost six months ago. And, um, you know, it's normal. I'm not suicidal or anything like that, but it's very normal to feel like you wished that you had died with the person. I was supposed to go on the trip with him and at the last minute, um, our house, our pet sitter fell through and so um, I had to stay home with pets and so I wasn't in the truck with him when he got into his accident and my side was just like smashed completely. His side, the cab, was still pretty much intact. Um, so I would have been killed instantly. And you know, for most of the time since he died, I have wished that I was in the cab with him and could have died with him. Um, and so it's been really hard for me because one of the things that I've really felt since the beginning of this whole ordeal is that I needed to say yes to God about living because obviously God wanted me to still be here. And so I've been saying yes to God about living, but my heart hasn't been in it. And it's kind of, you know, and I don't feel bad about that. I think that's normal. Um, you know, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed and asked God to let the cup pass him. Um, he wasn't excited about suffering. And... You know, he sweat drops of blood. He was so stressed by it. But he said, not your, not my will, but yours. And, you know, that's what ultimately made him obedient to God's will. And so I've been doing the same thing. I've been saying, God, what I really wish is that I could have died, but that's not what you chose. So not my will, but yours. Um, but, you know, it's hard to to be enthusiastic about that. I never used this one. That might be kind of cool. Um, but today, today I woke up and actually wanted to live. This was the first day in almost six months that I woke up and wanted to live and that has not changed at all today. Even after, you know, I realized that Bill wasn't in the bed with me, which I realize every morning when I wake up. Um, and that's always kind of a devastating realization. Um, so, so that's, I mean, that's a big thing to me that I actually want to live. I actually have a will to live now. And so I think that's, that's a big turning point for me. So, um, and there's a lot of factors involved in that. I think part of it was just, you know, time heals, starts healing you. Um, 
you never, from what I've understood from talking to other people, you never like get over the person. I mean, my grandma died when I was 30 and I'm still not over that. Um, I still miss her and everything. Um, you know, they're always going to be in your heart. That's just a fact of life. But it's not, today it's not devastating me. I, I have a will to live. And that's just like a really, really good thing. Um, so yeah, so time I think is part of it. I think part of it too is just that I have been, you know, being quote unquote obedient by saying yes to God. You know, obviously his will was for me to live because he didn't let me go on that trip. Um, and to live without Bill, which is very hard to accept um, because we really, really loved each other a lot. We had a fantastic marriage. Um, pretty much everybody that knew us said that we had the best marriage they had ever seen. Um, and it was too short. You know, we were married for four and a half years. We knew each other for just over five years. And so, you know, that's, that's a really short marriage, especially when I've been through a lot of hard things and then finally had someone who really loved me and that I really, really loved him and we had such a wonderful marriage and so it's just really hard to lose that and it seems really unfair and everything but I really trust God. I trust that he is wise. I trust that he loves me and that he loves Bill and um, that, you know, he wanted our best and so, you know, so he let this happen. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so that was part of it, part of, I think, what helped me get to this place. Um, okay, so I think that's probably all that I'm going to do on this today. Tomorrow I'm going to add lace to the edges. Um, oh, I did want to do one page that's Christmas. Let's do that. Um... That would be like the end of the year. So how about if we make it like the, well, no, I don't really want to make it the last page. How about if we just do that right here? Okay, and we'll do some, I've got Christmas stamps here someplace. How about some Christmas ornaments? That would be nice. Um, so the other thing that I think helped me get to this place is what something that actually depressed me at first a couple days ago, I realized Bill doesn't need me anymore. He's in heaven. He's with his late wife, Beth, who he really loved and who I never met, but I really loved her. Um, and she was just a wonderful person. And, you know, and she was part of our marriage, you know, in so many ways. She helped make Bill who he was. Um, he often said that she trained him. <laughs> and I felt like I really benefited from her training him. Um, so I really appreciate her and everything. And, you know, and so I'm, I'm happy for him being up there, but I'm not happy for myself not having him. But anyway, so it, it just really struck me the other day that he doesn't need me anymore. But I felt like I still needed him. And then I realized, you know what? God provides for all of our needs. If he, if he felt that I still needed Bill, then... Bill would still be here. And um, I learned so much from Bill, and he changed me. I mean, he really, really changed me in really good ways. And so I will always benefit from our marriage and our relationship and our friendship. Um, but how I do that will have to be unpacked with other people, not with him. And... Um, kind of going through the process of realizing that, I don't know, it just flipped a switch for me. It's hard to explain. It just flipped a switch for me that I knew, okay, Bill's okay. He doesn't need me taking care of him anymore. I'm okay. God's going to take care of me. He's going to provide other people to take care of me, you know, just like I help take care of other people. Um, everything's going to be good, you know, and it's hard to understand that right now. It's hard to uh, accept in a lot of ways still. 
but I feel like I'm on the mend now. Do I think that I'm going to just be happy from this point on? I cried this morning. I mean, I still cried and I probably still will cry often and I'll still be sad. You know, it's not, and there will probably be days that I don't feel like living anymore that I still wish that I'll, that I got killed in the accident. Um, because, you know, I've, I've seen that at this point anyway, my journey has been kind of three steps forward, two steps back. Um, so, you know, I expect that there are still hard days, but I think that this was really turning the corner and that this was real progress in my journey. And so, yeah, so that's all. So that's good. Okay. So I've just, I haven't gone around and like distressed every edge of this. I've just kind of done it all at once just to give some of it a, a little distressed look and I will see you tomorrow. Love you all. Bye-bye.